The last thing I'm going to talk about is channel. We only have so much time, and you've already been generous with it tonight to cover things. So I would simply say it's a whole subject unto itself. Uh, there are many ways to think about channel, from resellers to OEMs <laughs> to strategic partners. Again, if there's interest, I'll try to cover these things on the blog or in f future workshops. But one of the things I would encourage you as a startup to immediately distinguish between is when you think about channel, because it's the thing I clearly hear people forget, is there are three different ways in fundamental terms that a channel works with you. It either sells with you, so now that's assisted selling, or you sell through it, or they sell for you. And very few people spend enough time understanding what is the dynamic you're looking for from your channel. So just to start off with, think about those three things. And then what I'm going to do is introduce Brian here to come on up and talk to you about their example of how they built their channel model. Because I think it's more interesting <coughs> to hear a live case study. Excellent. Thanks, uh, thanks Michael. Quick question. Uh, what's, what does the channel care most about? What their customers care about. Simple. What their customer cares about is what the channel wants to spend time on. Now, the challenge is when you're first launching uh, and you don't have customer evidence and you want to go recruit a channel, not easy to do. Can be done. We'll talk a little bit about how we did it, but not easy to do. I think Jamie actually used the chicken and egg analogy. It's sort of the one that comes to mind uh, most often. One of the reasons why, uh, there were two reasons why we went to uh, Channel Model when we launched. One is that there are five decisions that a customer needs to make either before they purchase Unidesk or as they purchase Unidesk. And two, one of the key elements of that IT infrastructure that they're making decisions on is a product that's provided from a little company called VMware. And what we wanted to do is target and identify those customers and market specifically to them. So with that in mind, we naturally identified the top VMware partners that sold that product into the segments that we cared most about. And I'll speak broadly and then more specifically. So state and local government, higher education. But within those segments, we cared most about faculty and staff, and knowledge workers. Those are the areas that we could be disruptive for anybody that was considering making an investment in desktop virtualization. So once we compiled that list, we refined it further, and we identified the partners that we thought would, would take a chance on, an early, uh, on a disruptive technology. So you wouldn't go after the larger sort of uh, partners that had national footprints, that had longer onboarding processes, you could get to those later. Think of those as the laggards as it relates to the channel. We wanted the early adopters. We wanted the regional boutique partners that prided themselves on bringing value to their customers by introducing new technology. So that's something that we did. The key is then refine and focus further. I think focus has been used a few, time here to, a few times here tonight. Identify the person that the sales team listens to in that partner and target that individual. And that was typically the trusted advisor to the sales team. That would be, in, in our case, it was a technical architect. I was laughing, actually, when Jameis, you were talking about spreadsheets in the early days. It's spreadsheets everywhere. You came by the cube. It was you know, listing of all the partners, ranking them, identifying who we wanted to target, how we wanted to message to them, how they performed with VMware, what our unique value was going to be. You needed to be crisp. You had to have your buyer personas baked. I mean, all of those things needed to be aligned. So all the things we've been talking about here tonight. Once we gained the endorsement of the lead technical architect, we were then had the permission to engage the sellers. What I mean by that is the sellers wouldn't pay attention to you unless you had that endorsement. And our goal was to intercept partner-led sales opportunities and interject, interject Unidesk. Okay? So whether that's going back to customers they had sold to previously or, again, get involved with the ones that they had in flight. And frankly speaking, Adam, I, I, I loved what you were talking about from a brand perspective. Our sort of bold statement to the channel is we will not let your customers fail. So I know you're taking a chance, but we will provide such amazing customer support to your customer. We will do all the work. We will do all the selling. We will do all the support as they work through the free pilot stage. And we will make them amazingly successful. And they are going to be calling you to tell about that amazing experience that they had. And then we will further scale our footprint with that partner. And that's the way we trained. And you know, why we completed training and enablement. You have the on-demand tools, which you can try to get your partners to take advantage of. But until they experience a win with you, it's very difficult for you to get time with them. And if you're getting time with the channel when you don't have customer evidence, you're probably engaged with the wrong partner, Okay, if they have that kind of, that kind of time and capacity. The other important point is it's all about evidence. I think Tom sort of captured that. We have been very, very fortunate to have an incredibly passionate group of customers. And so when we, it comes time to truly scaling your channel, so now you're, you're starting to expand and engage some of the larger channel partners, the way that we engage these folks is our, so members of my team will call in and they will try to activate or recruit a channel partner. We'll do the best we can with the messaging, but in some cases they don't want to hear it. 
the follow-up discussion or if we are taking a next step with them, we will typically invite one of our customers, it's not even one of their customers, but one of our customers to that call and they will tell the same story we've been telling, but for whatever reason, the partner listens. So if you can, let, if you can get customers to deliver your message on your behalf to your channel partners or, or however you go to market, right, in whatever capacity, it'll be amazingly successful. It, it, it's all about accelerating um, the, the activity with the partners, and the best way to do that is certainly with, uh, with your customers. We're maniacal about measurement. I, you know, and, and then frankly, the channel, there's no easy way to manage, I mean, no easy way to score it. You end up in a spreadsheet inevitably. Uh, but for us, at a, at a very high level, we kind of categorize partners as A and B. A's are the ones that are strategic, that we could count on for, say, 60 to 70% of our revenue, you know, however you measure revenues or number of new customers or number of seats sold, but these are the organizations that we were locking in with and we were going to make a strategic commitment to and that we would expect the same from that channel partner. The other key piece I was sort of noticing here that's not, that's actually not listed is then when you think you've measured enough, go a level deeper and ask yourself when you look at your top channel partners and you might be impressed by you know, a national partner like a Presidio or a Dell or their contribution, and maybe they're in the top five for you, and then you have sort of regional boutique partners that are contributing less. But ask yourself, what percent of the mind share do you have from that particular organization? Is all your success coming from one office or one set of reps, or are there opportunities for you to scale? So you want to continue to measure down to the unique individual level as opposed to just at the partner account level. And lastly, repeat the cycle. I think, uh, just in closing here, the, the piece that you may want to keep in mind our channel is not very good at the social media marketing aspects of things. They're very good at field-based marketing, not good at nurturing. So they've effectively outsourced that to us. So as much as you can, you want to get them to share their database, their customer list, anything, and give and then establish a trusted enough relationship that they'll let you nurture them and then you can notify them based on experience on the site and so forth.